come to the screencast for worksheet 8. So first we will look at the discussion questions. Question 1a, state whether the following observations are exothermic or endothermic reactions. Magnesia on burning gives us a brilliant white flame. This is actually a combustion reaction, which is exothermic. It gives a brilliant white flame, that's why it's exothermic. Okay, during photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water reacts together in green plants in the presence of UV light to form glucose and oxygen. So photosynthesis we learned before is an endothermic process. When equal sodium hydroxide reacts with nitric acid in its neutralization, which is also exothermic. When carbon and uh, copper 2 oxide heated together, the reaction makes sure glow red hot long after heating has stopped. So even after heating has stopped, uh, it's, heat is still being produced, meaning that it is exothermic. Okay, a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen burns with a pop sound. Uh, this is actually the mini explosion, right? We've mentioned before, it is also exothermic. Now next we have um, ethane that when they put, uh, combust in air, what is the equation? So this is the standard equation for any hydrocarbon. Okay, any organic compound. When we burn it, this is the equation. So it will be the organic compound plus oxygen gives us carbon dioxide and water. So you just need to balance the equation. Now let's look at, uh, I've written the products here, but it's not balanced yet. Can you try balancing it? Okay, so first there's two carbon, so put two in front of carbon here, then uh, about hydrogen here, there's six, so put a three here. But if I do this, then I'll get a odd number for my number of oxygen. I'll have four plus three, seven here, but I have, it must be a multiple of two. So let me multiply everything by two. In this way, I have um, 8 oxygen plus 6, 8 plus 6, 14, so 7 oxygen gas. Now, they say that 1 mole of ethane produces this amount of heat when completely burnt in air. Now, let's recall the meaning of delta H. Okay? Remember the delta H of a given equation is, for this case, is when 2 moles of C2 H6 reacts with 7 moles of oxygen gas to give 4 moles of CO2 and 6 moles of water. Now, um, based on this, and given that the question says that it's 1 mole of ethane producing this 1560 kilojoule of heat, so, since the equation tell, tells us that um, the enthalpy change needs to look at 2 moles of C2H4, therefore, I need to multiply it by 2. So, I get um, 3, 1, 2, 0 kilojoule per mole. Okay, this is where a lot of you got it wrong. You just wrote down 1560, but think that it's only for 1 mole. So, we always need to look at the equation and think about um, what is the meaning of enthalpy change in a given equation. How many number of moles am I looking at? Okay, let's look at the mode calculation. So you have forgot your mode calculations as well, so I thought I would just go through. So to get the number of moles of ethane, now they give us the mass, so how can I find the number of moles? So first is always in grams divided by, uh, let me just use blue, uh, a bit confusing. Okay. Divide it by the MR of ethane, which is 2 times 12 plus 6. How many number of moles is this? I can't remember. <laughs> okay, let me calculate. 
Okay, 2 times 12 plus 6, 30. Oh, I remember already. It's 333.33 three, three, three three, three mole. Okay, most of you can get out to here. So, in the intermediate steps, leave it to 5SF. Take note not to leave your answer in fractions, because in chemistry, uh, we don't do that. Okay, never leave your answer in fractions. Okay, the energy released is, let's look at the number of moles. One mole of ethane, one mole produce this amount of heat, so I can just take 333 three, 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 three times 1560. Okay, my answer will be 5199940 We always leave our answer to 3SF, so 5.20 times 10 to the power. 5 kilojoule per mole. So this is your answer. Okay, let me just write down the warning. Do not write answers in fractions. Not even for intermediate steps. Okay, intermediate steps to 5SF. Okay, next question 3. One energy. Okay, for this question, I think it was generally. Uh, well done, just that some of you, I don't know, got a bit confused and there were some careless mistakes here and there. So, um, take note that on the left hand side is our reactants. So, for re reactants to form products, I must break the bonds of the reactants and I must form the bonds of the products. So, over here, I have written break and form. So, on the right hand side, you will see that actually there's no formation of bonds, they are individual atoms. So therefore, we only need to calculate the energy required to break bonds. Okay, therefore, your answer will be uh, two times four three one four eight six kilojoule. Okay, so delta H equals to 1486 kilojoule per mole. Now over here, let's look at the energy we need to break the bonds. Okay, let me just combine the steps. Okay, the energy required is um, the bond energy of the N triple bond N plus 3 of the bond energy of the H H bond minus away um, there are one two three N H single bonds but I need to multiply by two so minus two times three of the bond energy of N H Okay, so if you do this correctly, uh, let's see what's the answer. Nine, nine, four, five, plus BPE times four, three, six, minus six times N H single bond three eight eight. That will leave us with. Sorry, I only have my phone with me. <laughs> One three zero eight minus Okay, so you can check. Do you get any of your answers wrong? Let's do negative seventy five.
Okay, so you forgot to write the sign. Oh, I forgot to mention it just now. Now, in whenever we write delta H, right, it's important, it's imperative that we write the sign because it is always accompanied by the sign, just like in our oxidation state. The sign tells us whether something is exothermic or endothermic. Hence, even if it's a positive, as in even if it's greater than zero, you still need to give the positive sign. Okay, next. Uh, I've already written down most of it. Okay, break this uh, form. Let me just calculate very quickly. If I remember from memory, it is positive 94. Let's see, yeah. Uh. Eh, wrong there. Did I copy down any wrong values? Break a HBR bond, 360. Then HH bond, 436. Ah, 436. Yes, so my memory was correct. And lastly, my answer should be 1170 something. <laughs> Let me calculate. Why didn't I just copy down the answer? Wrong again. Why? Uh? Oh, there's four of these. See, uh, teachers are also prone to careless mistake. I always had careless mistake here last time too. Okay, yeah, four, five, four. There. Five, six, five times four. Plus nine, four, five. Take a look at two point one seven four. Okay, so this is how you do the question. Now, uh, maybe I just highlight how do I get four and H here. One, two, three, four, and you have one single, and N bond. Okay, some of you for some reason left out these two H, two FF bond. Okay, so let's to take note. Now next, assignment question one. Iron and sulfur react together with this equation. Okay, when they are at room temperature, no apparent reaction. When you heat it, you form a black solid that proceeds to completion even after the external heat source is removed. What is the name given to the energy used to start a reaction? This is actually your activation energy. Once it starts, the heat source may be removed. So why is this so? Now we need to look at the delta H. Over here is a negative sign. What does it tell us? It is an exothermic reaction. So once the reaction starts, uh, the reaction is exothermic hence once it starts it will provide heat that K 
can sustain the reaction. Now, some of you think that um, once the reaction starts, the heat source will be removed because activation energy has already been overcome. But that's not true. Uh, actually, what is happening here will be that the activation energy for some of the molecules has been overcome. When you hit something, it's not true that all the molecules will possess sufficient energy to reach completion. Okay, so what happens is that once the reaction gets going, it provides heat to itself. So in that way, the it heats up its own molecule and uh, sustain the reaction. Okay, question two. Chlorine reacts with uh, iodine reacts with chlorine to form iodine chloride. Overall energy change is this. Explain in terms of bond breaking. So here they give you a specific requirement. So you must obviously explain in terms of the bond breaking and bond formation. Now, uh, more most of you correctly identified that when you form bonds, if it's negative, forming bonds give off more energy than energy required to break. But some of you use the wrong terminology. For example, when you say that uh, more energy is required in forming the bonds. Now, energy is not required to form the bonds. Energy is given off. Okay, And also to be more specific, state exactly what are the bonds that we are breaking. breaking. Okay, next question. Given that the bond energy is for II single bond and CLCL single bond is still this, calculate the bond energy in kilojoules for the ICL bond. Okay, so for this question, you must first write out the equation. You will see that there are there's one II bond breaking, one CLCL bond that's also breaking, and we have two of the I C L bond that is being formed. Hence, for this question, how can I solve this? You know that the overall enthalpy change is negative 11 kilojoules. So we can write an equation where the energy required to form is 151 plus 242 minus away 2x will give us negative 11. Okay. So from here, just need to solve for x. Okay, let me just write down. One plus two four two plus eleven. Four zero four divided by two. Two zero two. Okay, now, um, I did not say this, but for bond energy, we don't need to write the sign. Okay, so therefore, the bond energy for ICL is 202 kJ per mole. Okay, next question 3. Hydrogen peroxide has this structural formula and it decomposes into water and oxygen providing 98 kilojoules of heat energy per mole of H2O2. So I guess that most of you can write this equation, seeing that they already told you what are the products. Okay. Um, so the use of state symbols is required for this question. Most of you didn't get the state symbol for H2O2. Okay. So think that it's a liquid. Given that the bond energies are this and this, calculate the bond energy for the OO single bond. So again, we write out the equation. You will see the bonds that you need to break and the bonds that you need to form. Okay, if X is the bond energy for OO, here you will see that since there's two of each, I need to break in total two OO single bond. Okay, there are also two OH single bond in each uh, hydrogen peroxide molecule, and there's two moles of it. So uh, I should have in total 4. Okay, on the right hand side, the bonds that I need to form, I'll have 2 OH single bond for every water molecule times 2, so total 4. And I have 1 OO double bond. Okay, so let me just write down the answer. 4 
six four six three times four plus four nine six thirty two three four Okay, so delta H will be let's add the two together, one eight five two plus two x equals to negative there minus two three four a this will give us uh, what's the enthalpy change? Ah uh, this is where a lot of students got it wrong as well. Now take a note here that this is the amount of heat given up per mole of H2O2. Again, in this equation, in delta H refers to when two moles of hydrogen peroxide are decomposed to give two moles of water and one mole of oxygen gas. So since this is per mole of H2O2, and delta H is supposed to calculate two moles of your H2O2 here, therefore your delta H should be twice of that. Uh, since it's producing, it also tells you the sign. If it gives off that amount of heat, I should have a negative sign. Um, then 2 times 98. Okay, then simplify the equation. You should get x equals to um, 150, I think. Therefore, the bond energy for OO single bond is... 150 kilojoule per mole. Okay, why is it that we don't need to write the sign for bond energy? It's because by default it is the energy required. Okay, now next let's look at this graph. Okay, analyze the question. Question 4. Uh, here. Okay, I have 50 cnq of 1 mole TNQ of sodium hydroxide added to the vessel. Okay, after, after one minute, I add HCl. Record the evidence. Okay, so at this point is where you added in the. Oh, after one minute, sorry. So at this point is where we added in now HCl. So, what is the reaction here? It is a neutralization reaction. I think everyone got this correct. Now, using the graph, estimate the maximum. Temperature change, temperature rise. So they ask you for the temperature change, the rise in the temperature. So just take, it should be around 21 to 15. Okay, so it's around 6 degrees Celsius. Okay, this is the part where a lot of you don't know how to do. It is known that 1 cnq of the reaction mixture requires 4.2 joules of energy to be heated up by 1 degree Celsius. Assume that the heat energy released from the reaction was used to heat up the reaction mixture. So we are saying that this is an exothermic reaction. And what caused this increase in what caused this increase in temperature is the heat that's given off from this neutralization reaction. So, it asks you to calculate the amount of heat energy released during the reaction. Amount of heat energy released. How do I calculate this? Now, 1 cnq of reaction mixture requires 4.2 joules of energy to be heated up by 1 degree Celsius. So, 4.2 joules of energy Multiply by the uh, change in temperature, which is 6. Multiply by what is the total volume of the reaction mixture. Now, you may think that it is 50 cm cube, But, take note that we are also adding 50 cm cube of hydrochloric acid. So, in total, the volume of water that you've heated up is 100 cm cube. If you add this up, 4.2 times 6 plus 100 ok 
okay we get 2520 joules of energy okay next uh, I think most of you are able to calculate the number of moles of NaOH it is simply the volume multiplied by the concentration which is 0 0.054 since uh, based on the equation we have a 1 is to 1 ratio okay so the number of moles of water produced is also 0 0.05 hence calculate the enthalpy change of this reaction now for this uh, the enthalpy change for this reaction you can see that it is when one mole of water is being formed so um, this is the heat that's generated and then this is the number of moles delta h will be equals to 2520 divided by 0 0.005 okay number is joules per mole divided by 0 0.005 okay I'll get the answer 504 kilojoules per mole okay this part this um, last part is also poly done so I'm going to explain uh, part D, how would you explain? Uh, expect the graph to change if I use sulfuric acid of the same con volume and concentration as HCl. Now, just go over here and think about it. Hmm. Which is the limiting reagent here? It is actually stated in the question that your sodium hydroxide is limiting. Now, if your sodium hydroxide is limiting, um, for changing to uh, HCl uh, while changing from HCl to H2SO4 cause a change in the total amount of water form okay, no right now we need to see what's the difference if I use H2SO4 versus HCl of the same concentration we can see that obviously there's a much higher concentration of our H plus twice as much in fact so um, First thing we need to note down is that the max temperature rise will not change. This is because um, NaOH is limiting, hence the number of moles of water form will not change okay second we need to ask how would the rate of temperature increase change okay for this we need to consider the factors of rate of reaction here we mentioned that there's an increase in the concentration of H plus ions because of that okay if you look here because there's an increase in the concentration of H plus ions, meaning that they will collide more frequently with our hydroxide ions to form water. So, therefore, the rate of increase of temperature will be faster. Okay, so how it will change for the graph is that the graph, the gradient of graph from 1 to 2 minutes will be steeper okay this is because let's use this so I have space okay this is because um, uh, there's a increase in concentration of H plus ions which means that more uh, higher frequency of effective collisions between OH minus and H plus ions therefore faster rate of reaction 
Okay. So in general, let me just summarize. I think what most of you need to understand is that how do we read delta H? Again, delta H is not just simply from the question, just read from here. We rather we need to interpret the meaning of the equation. Okay, based on the equation, it wants two moles, whereas the question tells us it is per mole, so delta H equals to negative mm, 196 kilojoules per mole instead of negative 98. Okay, so that's all for me. Thank you.